Todd Dunn here on March 12, 2019. I want to welcome you to the third video in this series on the building of a 1 12th scale radio control sailing model of a Morris M36 day sailor. This video is the first of probably two videos on building the deck, cabin house, and cockpit. So let's get going. Before I could start building the deck, I had to have drawings for it. Now, I could have bought them from Sparkman and Stevens, but the amount they wanted for deck drawings was just outrageous. I couldn't afford it. So, instead of ordering plans, I decided to take advantage of the fact that Morris Yachts, in early 2006, was actively building at least three M36s at any given time. And I was on good terms with them. So, after a couple phone calls, I arranged to go over into their production facility where they were fitting out decks and take lots and lots of pictures and lots and lots of measurements which I could use to draw my own deck plan. Once I had drawn the deck plan, I set about building the deck. The first thing to do was to build a frame on which to build it, in which there were station frames along the length of the deck that included the deck camber, which is something that I measured from actual decks, as well as had the shape of the shear of the boat so that it would fit onto the hull without any uh, bending or anything like that. And this picture shows my molds that I set up for building the deck. And it's got a centerline plank of 1 16th inch thick balsa wood laid down on it. Once I got to this point, I set about planking out the entire deck. This picture shows the deck after I finished planking it and put a layer of 6 ounce fiberglass cloth set in epoxy onto it. I planked the deck with full length strips of balsa wood, 1 16th inch thick by 1 quarter inch wide. This is a little bit wider than I used for the hull, but since the deck doesn't have any real complex curves in it, I was able to use wider planking, which made the planking go faster. You can also see in this picture the outline of where the cabin house will be. Once I finished glassing the top of the deck, I removed it from the building frame, flipped it over, cleaned up the underside, and put a layer of fiberglass cloth on the underside of the deck. This is for the same reason that I glassed the inside of the hull. This boat is going to be going into the water. I didn't want any water that got into the boat to damage the wood. This picture shows the more or less finished deck. It's sitting next to the hull, and the perspective makes it look smaller, but I assure you it's the same size as the hull. And we'll come back to what's in the hull in a future video. But the deck has a couple of noteworthy features. You can see the outline on the deck for where the cabin house will be, and after that, where the cockpit will be. These are areas where I'm going to cut holes in the deck because... The cabin house, which sits on top of the deck, is going to be my access to the radio control hardware. And the cockpit sits below the deck, so I'll have to build the cockpit separately and attach it. But I need a hole in the deck for that to happen. And I've also filled the weave of the fiberglass cloth with epoxy and then fared the surface uh, with fairing compound and sanded it out so it's nice and smooth. This picture is looking down on the deck. It's sitting on the hull at this point. And you can see the cutout for the uh, cabin house. And you can see the outline of the framing I put around the base of the cabin house there that the cabin sides will be glued to. At the bow, you can see 
an opening into what would normally be the anchor locker. But what this actually does is allows me access to an attachment point for some of the radio control rigging that's inside the boat. That once the deck was on, I would not be able to rig otherwise. And inside, you can see the radio control hardware, and I'll come back to that in a later video. And aft, you can see the cockpit. Like the hull and the deck, the cockpit is built from 1 16th inch thick balsa wood. It's fiberglassed on both sides. And then, to make painting easier, rather than tediously uh, hand sand and fair out all these different surfaces, what I did was I glued down a thin layer, I believe it's uh, 15 thousandths thick styrene sheet that I cut out to match the shape of the cockpit. The styrene sheet uh, helps to uh, make the cockpit nice and smooth so that once I do this I can quite literally go directly to the paint step. This, I do have to however fare the joints between different pieces of styrene sheet to uh, get a nice smooth contrast so that when it's painted you won't see the boundaries between different pieces of styrene sheet. If you look closely you can see that there's a cockpit seat on either side of the forward end of the cockpit and on the port side cockpit seat there is a locker, a hatch built, cut into it. After that the cockpit drops down to make the cockpit sole T-shaped. Uh, forward of that T is where the steering pedestal will be and after that is another seat again with a hatch cut into it uh, where the helmsman can sit. If you look just forward of the head of the T in the cockpit sole you might be able to make out a styrene tube coming up from the cockpit sole. That tube penetrates the cockpit sole and uh, rises up to the level of the cockpit seats. And I will, after I finish a lot of the other painting, put in a brace to keep the top of that tube from moving. That tube is there to bring the main sheet up so that I can attach it to the boom. Okay, at this point, the next step is to build the cabin house itself, which consists of the sides and front and back of the cabin house. And um, before I show you that construction, I'll tell you that both the cabin sides and the cabin forward face slope inward, whereas the aft face of the cabin house is vertical. Okay, let's take a look at the cabin house after it's uh, been built. This picture shows the underside of the deck, and in particular the cockpit. You can see the outline of the various parts of the cockpit quite well here. You can see the T-shaped cockpit sole, which slopes up on either side of the head of the T. You can also see the bottoms of the cockpit seats. You can also see the continuation of the styrene tube I mentioned earlier that penetrates the cockpit sole and extends up to the level of the top of the cockpit seats. This tube, when it extends to the front edge of the cockpit, is there to pass the main sheet through as it goes from the main sail servo and up to the boom. And in particular, it's there because right under this part of the cockpit is where the rudder servo is, and I don't want the main sheet hanging down and getting caught on it. So this just is there to keep the main sheet out of the way. This picture shows the uh, deck after I finished building the cabin house and the cockpit combing. Again, the cabin house and cockpit combing are built out of 1 16th inch thick balsa wood, and I have in the cockpit faced the inside and the top edge of the cockpit combing with styrene sheet. Again, simply to make it easier to paint. And I will be doing the same thing to the cabin house, and I'll show you that in the next picture. 
I've also got the cabin top in here, which is, again, a cambered cabin top. The cabin house does have camber as you go across it. Well, here's the finished cabin house and cockpit combing. You can see they're both faced with the white styrene sheet. And there's another significant detail, though. The Morris M36 has three ports in the cabin house side. And what I've done to show where they are is I have cut through the styrene sheet to make cutouts in the shape of the three ports. And I'll come back to the finishing detail of those ports a little later. I should also mention the cabin top. The cabin top is going to be removable because I need access to the inside of the boat to get to the radio control electronics and to be able to change batteries. So the inside edge of the cabin top has been thickened to make a clamp and it's all been epoxied and I have drilled holes through the corners of the cabin top and drilled matching holes into the clamp underneath, uh, filled those holes with epoxy, and then re-drilled and tapped them for number four stainless steel screws, which will hold the cabin top down. And also, around the top edge of the cabin house and on the bottom of the cabin top and the outer quarter inch of it, I've coated both with uh, silicone rubber to form a sort of gasket to make the seal as close to watertight as I can. In this picture, I've pretty much finished building the cabin house completely by putting the last few details on. And as you can see, I've also started painting. If you look at the top of the cabin house, you can see that I have installed the spray hood and rails for the companionway slide. And just forward of the cabin house, you can see a low white feature. That is a, a mast step for the deck stepped mast. And forward of that, you see a little white uh, rectangle, which is actually a track, uh, which on the real boat is where there is a block that the uh, jib sheet comes down to and that block can slide back and forth as you tack. And of course you can set how far it slides if you want to. The paint here is the first coat on the hull and I've got the base coat of gloss white on the deck and cabin house. So we'll be putting more coats of paint on the hull this is uh, flag blue paint, and I probably I can't remember, but I think I put about four coats on before I was happy with it. And I'm uh, painting the hull here with uh, Interlux Easy Poxy uh, one part urethane, uh, largely because I don't have a setup to uh, spray all grip, which would have been preferable although all grip would also have been much more expensive. Well, that pretty much finishes what I want to say about building the deck and cabin house and cockpit. Next time, we're going to move on to detailing those features and the uh, installation of the uh, steering pedestal. So, hope you enjoyed this little uh, slideshow showing the continuation of construction of my Morris M36 day sailor model. And I hope you are looking forward to the next one, which should be up in a few days. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give me the old thumbs up. And please, if you haven't, do subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you'll get notification when my next video comes out. Thanks again for watching.